So, went on to um, the BSA Bantam Owners Club, onto their site, and um, looked at the differences of um, wiring diagrams for Bantams. And there's quite a few, really. Um, there's this one here which I downloaded and I printed off um, and then I've expanded on that one which is this is an expansion there of that to be able to give me some idea and then there's this one now this one has got a stop switch fitted and so I need a stop switch but according to this one when my bike was made, it didn't have a stop switch. But obviously it needs one for a safety sake. So there's another one on there which shows the colours, the wirings um, diagram in colours to bits and pieces. And that's quite clear really. Um, and again, it's very similar to mine insofar as um, it, it doesn't have a stop switch. And then there's a very nice one, which again is like this, which somebody's done on the um, Bantam Club, which shows the lights, the light switch there and its positions and how they all activate and do the thing, and linking you know to a picture of the actual generator. You can probably see them all there. I'll bring them a bit closer for you. You can see it. So I printed that off. But um, what I have done is on my particular bike um, I've had electronic ignition fitted. So um, my bike is no battery. So that part has already been fitted for on my bike and this one is the two where there's two wires that have to go onto it. And they're both yellow, as they would always have to be, wouldn't they? You'd think they'd change a yellow colour, but hey. Anyway, it links to the bulbs. So you must have a, a plus and a minus. So it wouldn't be too hard to work out what one went where, you know. And, and on it, I'll bring it around so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see that's uh, on there, and then this one bridges that other, that top wire and vice versa, one goes there, one goes there. So it's not too hard to understand that one would have to be the positive, one would have to be the negative, so that when the engine is going and it's making its spark, it will produce the um, power for the lights, which is cool. Which is in line with the original um, wiring diagram but also it's got a very um, it's got like an, a low light side light powered by a battery on there so I'm gonna have to get a battery container to be able to do it so when you look at the wires in on that wiring diagram and compare them to that diagram which like I say I downloaded from the um, BSA Bantam Owners Club. It's it's pretty cool. So what I did is I didn't have enough wires to do what has to be done. So I ordered a mass of wires that are the right size, the right shape, the right colours, with the exception of one that was um, translucent. Um, and that's, uh, I've replaced that with a white one. So, what I then did is I set about wiring up the switch. And I'm following this wiring diagram. So where this wire, wiring diagram has got a space there 
when you look at the actual switch, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a like a, um, a banana shape thing that's on the switch. Oh, I can't get enough light to it to show you where it is. You're going to have to trust me that it's there really. But it's there. And it's a banana shaped thing. So, for instance, number one and number eight on the diagram. Number one and number eight on the diagram are wired together to go to the switch. So, number one and number eight are wired together wired together to go to the dip switch. Number nine there goes all the way around to the side light. So number nine Is wired to go to the side light. Number seven is a power. So number seven goes to the magneto, right? In, in there. But what I didn't have, I didn't have a dark red. So I put red and yellow, put a red and yellow line. And then number eight. There is um, translucent, so it's the like uh, the earth because it all goes down to the earth in the headlight shell. So there is number eight wired up one, one to go to the headlight and one to go backwards. So I copied that. I'm trying to see if you can see it. So I copied that. One to go to the headlight and one to go all the way back back to the bike. Done that. And then the next one round is a green one. And you can see that the green one goes down to a battery pack. Well this is only three volts here. Um, but I put a 12 volt bulb in. So uh, I'll just get a 12 volt battery to go onto their little one. And there is the green one ready to go. And then finally, number two is black. And it goes up to the speedo and then all the way down to the tail light. So there is a two into one. That one is marked for the speedo and that one is marked to the back tail light. Now you'll see that what I've done is I've also stuck little stickers on each of these lights so that I don't have to write down what they are and it's done. And what I bought was a labeling machine. Now it's really good. I think it was 20 quid to buy um, and you can see that there the, the uh, it tells you there if, if the light can hold it. And it says Speedo Bulb Earth. So, and all, all I do, as you'll see me do it, is you type it out, press a button, prints out at the side, and then I um, cut it off and I stick it on. So, following on from the headlight. So there's two wires that come out from the headlight that go up to the dip uh, switch. So this is my headlamp bulb, just bog standard with it in there. And I've got two wires that come out and go to the dip switch. And I've already tested those to make sure that they are the right ones. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I've got myself an old car battery. 
there's the car battery. I've got a couple of crocodile clips and I'm running them across there. So, and I've worked out which one went where. Because See it working, can't you? There, look. There's the ball working, so everything's cool in relation to that. So, then the other wire, as you can see, earths the bulb. So, I made a wire to the headlight earth so I know that that's wired in okay so again according to the wiring diagram there's a bulb where the parking bulb is blue and I've already shown you that I've wired it up to the blue on there and then there's an earth. So there's the power, the live, and there's the earth. And again, I'll just demonstrate it for you. Can see it glowing, can't you? There you go. So we know that's all working all right and then right at the back is the rear tail light so again it's got a power and it's got a negative so Can you see it working? There you go. So I know everything's working there. So I know all the bulbs and everything are working. So my next thing to do really is to fit the switch onto um, the bike. Now the switch would go in the middle and on my particular back switch, I've only got two positions, low, off or high. So it's either low, I don't know if you could hear it click, off or high. That's it. There is no other to do. So I've now got to... mount it in the headlamp and it only sticks through just a little bit and it's got this little bracket here the switch and I couldn't work out what that was for really because when you put it on um, it's got a flat edge I don't know if, you, if the camera can pick it up it's got a flat edge there and the threaded bar's got a flat edge, so it can only go on one way. And when you do that, it seems to press against the wires, but there's nothing for it to press against. Now, I thought, well, what, what on earth does it do? Because when that goes on top, it can't actually be an extra earth, because this steel block is preventing it from doing it. So... Does it go on like that? And then that screw on because those two holes there and there and there, they hold the screws to hold this, the switch outer case onto the headlamp. So I, I put a request out on the uh, BSA Bantam Owners Club and asked them what they thought. And apparently this holds some sort of fuse box fuse block which 
on this one is there. So this thing apparently would hold that um, for, for it to do it. But I haven't got that because it's not on my original wiring diagram and it's not on the other diagram that I've been working on. So, for the time being, I'm going to ignore it. It's not going to happen. So what I need to do now is I need to place this switch along with the Bakelite top, nuts and all, all the bit, other bits and bobs. I need to place that on the um, motorbike headlight shell. So I'm going to stop the tape and just swizzle it round. So all the cables on the bike would come up through here and then go to the varying parts on the switch and go off up to the um, dip switch and then run along to the bike. But it also, in order to protect that from the weather, um, I bought myself a grommet which when it comes round to being fitted would we'll just go on there that way around to be able to do it but I'm not really ready to do that just yet because all I want to do at the moment is get this uh, switch fitted so just bear with us so the switch wants to be in the middle so And then what I need is to make sure that this bracket here with the two holes is square. So let's get it in. too tight for there. So it clogged up. I'm just going to have to clean them a moment or two. So the hole is covered up with paint when it was sprayed. It's just a bit too narrow. To, um, to fit these screws. There we go. So if that's the same, then I might have to, because it won't make a good contact there, will it? I might just have to rub that down. to make sure it is a nice tight contact. Hmm. I don't suppose there's anything spoiling in relating doing that. So I'm just gonna go get the Dremel. So I've got my Dremel and I'm just gonna make that some bare metal just to make sure that there is a good contact. That's a lot better. Let's see if I can get it in and show you it. You can see now, can't you, that a lot more square. So 
I'm just going to use a Dremel to clean the top of this off to make sure again that this it's got good um, metal to metal contact. The last thing you want to do really is not have out. So that's now shiny when you look at it that way. Shiny there, not shiny. So when I come to fit the switch, you can see it does have a little square edge there. And when I fit this, the switch over there, that's what's going to be. And then the nut is going to go on top of it. I'm going to go on top and hold it down and then the screws will th screw through there and we'll see how we go. Right, I'm going to change the camera angle then. So I'm just going to put these screws through here into that metal bra bracket below just to hold it on so it keeps it square I would do if we could find the hole a bit fiddly there we go okay then The nut goes on top. Like so. Size is that? 16. 15 is a better fit. Check one off, two off, brilliant. So let's just take them off. Put that there for safety. and square that up little chrome screw again down there taking care not to scratch anything Nice and steady. Voila, and there's the switch fitted to the actual switch itself underneath. And all these cables can be tucked up out of the way when we come to put the headlight on, and we'll do the th the uh, the rest of the rewiring really. So while I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the dip switch on there. And it, the dip switch has only just come today, 
So I'm going to mount the dip switch on there and then I'm going to build some cables to come round and go into there and see how it goes. But the one thing I'm not too sure on is how the wires go into there. Look at my beard. Look at this. It's really I'm getting grey. And so I'm not too sure on how the wires go in there. And again I looked on YouTube and once again there's no YouTube of anybody showing how to fit a dip switch. So I'm going to try it myself. Okay right so having taken the dip switch completely to pieces it seems that you pass the wires through there and they come out at the top. Let me show you. It's just an example. So the wire would Let's see. So the wire would go through there and come out at the top. So I'd have to work out exactly how far that distance is there. Can you just see it coming out? Just there. So I'd have to work out just how far that's needed to chip out. And then there's a little gap in the um, side of the switch, which when it goes on there, when it's mounted on, the wire would run from there, down there, dink, and up into the switch. So what I've got to do is make one. Make the right wires to fit. So I need to make sure that the wires that I do are going to be the right length without going to cause any problems on the bike. So there's plenty of room there. So I'm just going to snip off that. So again, the wire would run from the dip switch round underneath and into there, into the headlight. You can see it there and attached to the appropriate um, part of it. So that was one. So again I've got myself a load of wires from a, an auto ele electrician um, and I'm going to make sure that they're the same length. So I'm just making sure that they're the same length I'm going to cut it off there. So they're the same length. Now it's going to look a bit pants, isn't it? Having just some wires like that. So the same auto electrician has some snap coverings and it snaps back into place. So that when the wires go in, like that, inside it, it snaps into place and they've got a protective sheath on, like so. So that should be protecting it from the thing and it should look quite tidy. So I'll just run that off the same length as the wires, just running it to the same length, cut it off about there. Now, I've never actually used this before, so 
What it might do is it will give me a starter for 10 I suppose. Um, if I then up having to bind the wires in tape to make them more waterproof. But we'll see how we go. This is an amazing gadget. It's a wire stripper and it's come from my favourite shop, Alfred's, and it's really good gadget. And if you haven't got one of these, you should treat yourself to it. And all you do is you take the wire and you put it into the teeth of the gadget. I don't know if you can see it all right. Yeah. And you just do that. Get rid of the old one. How easy was that to strip that wire, eh? Absolutely perfect. So we'll just do the same again. So you just bob it in. And then get rid of the old rubbish. Do it again. Strips it. Absolutely perfect. So simple to do. Pop it in the wire stripper. I think it was about 10 quid. And I've had it for years and years. Um, and I, I've used it all the time really. I used to strip the wires with a Stanley knife or with um, pliers and one of those old fashioned wire stripper things. See over there. What a difference. Just so simple to do. So. Oop. I've just made the wires to go from the dip switch down towards the headlight but I've also got that bright red one to go from there so I need to just make sure I know which one it is yep it's the bright red one So I just need to make sure I've got the same length again. I have. Again, just pop it on. Twist it. Nice and tight. Look how clean they are. They're so good. If you don't give it a belt and get rid of the old plastic sheathing, sometimes it jams it up. So, we're talking about it's got to be passed up through there onto the top. I've never done this before so I'm just making it up as I go along really. So I've folded it over push it through folded it over to stop it falling out push it through folded it over to stop them from falling out. Get the top of the switch. Plenty of room there. Well, they're on nice and tight. Get that over the top. And then where's them to go? So I'm, ooh, I need to move this now back to the handlebars to show me so you're fitting it on the handlebars. So I'll stop the video. So I need to fit the switch. 
of the wires coming through that little indentation. There's one. Hold it like that. So it's got this little, ooh, little thing. I don't know if you can see that there. Two fingers away from it. That's what's holding the switch on. So I'm just screwing it through. Come on now. Uh -huh. Right. There's the deliberate mistake. Only one side of these things is threaded. <laughs> and like I always do, I put the threads on the wrong way around. So Let's see if I can ooh, undo this, pass it through that one, and then Holding it on. Well that seems to be okay, but what it's missing is I would like to have another nut and a spring washer on there securing it. So I'm going to do that in a moment or two. So the wires then would go through there and through there in that coating to be connected up. So let's have a look. I'll step this back a minute or two. So the wires on the dip switch would come round go through there and then I'll be joining up to the appropriate thing. So that black protection cabling, which now I see it, doesn't really engender me with a lot of confidence. Right of sorts, I suppose, but it all it's not a really good, but it gives me a starter for 10, as I said, to be able to seal it up a bit better.
So if that comes through like that. And goes in through there. It's not going to turn that. Yeah. And that can connect to wherever it is. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's um just cut it. So we've got some wires hanging out of it. gives me a starter. Shall we see what it would look like when we put some um, masking tape around it? Let's have a look. So I've bound the cable. Well, you can't see it at all can you really? Um, bound the cable with masking tape. Run it underneath the headlamp and it's got to go through this uh, up here at the bottom. So to start with then, I'm just going to, oh you can hear that rain can't you, pass it through the grommet because there's that one and then the main wiring loom grommet on trousers grommet for it to, um, to fit properly. So then these now need attachments putting onto them in order to um, go to the headlamp. So I'll stop it for a moment.